Okay, so what we're going to do here, it's a typical problem with a silver reed on Nipmaster carriage. As you can see, that's very stiff, and so is that one. It should be running freely. As you can see, they're not. So I'm going to give you a quick guide on how to break them down and service them. First step, remove the handle. This is the type of screwdriver I use. There's two little screws in here. Sometimes they're a little bit more difficult to get out than others. show the camera over here. Those are the two little barrel screws that come out of them. And back over to here. And that removes the carriage handle. I always place the parts that come off with the screws. Next step, as you can see down in here, you move the camera down in here. Remove these two screws here to loosen the casing. Very common with these carriages to have a loose casing like that. It's those two screws that you would need to tighten up. Next step, as you can see, that doesn't remove the casing. Remove the dial. It's either naught to all the way past naught to lift it, and in this one it is, or all the way round past 10. That removes that. Next step. See the tripper here? Turn that out. And you can see a little pin right here. I'm gonna show you it. That pin there. And there's a slot down in here. So those that pin and that slot need to line up. So we're going to spin this around like that. So now we've got a nice straight line for the hole and the slot. Hopefully. Ah, oh, there it is lift up there's a little spring here that pokes through here that spring there you just need to push it in with your finger to release the carriage casing right now what we have here these are the drums so main pattern drum and the sub drum now you, this is all spring loaded so this is where you need to be careful. This is where, I, what, where I'm going to show you what to do. So the first thing you need to do, this is the way that I do it, different people do it in different ways, is this spring here, that one there, push down and out. That releases that spring. So as you can see, there's a little slot here where it fits. To put it back, it's very easy. Push it down and back under. A little fiddly sometimes there you go next step is this bracket here this semi-circular moon bracket here so you're going to take that off we could get a better screwdriver Try to use magnetic screwdrivers if yeah, you can. Yeah, it's a lot easier. As you can see, that spring, which I'll show you shortly, is attached inside 
that this here so when I take this off you'll see what I mean so this tension strip here is attached to a spring right here so there's a spring here right there and this tension strip strip this white strip here all you do is just very gently flip that off there like that that's actually a silver strip yeah but it looks white against the rest of it then you just slide that out and that has two holes in it as you can see but that silver strip goes through next step you don't need to mess with any of this and you don't need to mess with any of that there's one circlip here on top of this sub drum which you could just hopefully I always have difficult with you because I've got big man hands there's the circlip right there put that to one side now the best way I have found is to make sure that those pins there are down and then remove the sub drum like that so if you look at here those pins are pushed in those are not make sure those pins are pushed in so that you can release just pull the sub drum right out now as you can see the main drum is perfectly fine and i found that on a lot of the silver reed carriages that the main drum is fine i always check to make sure there is no yarn wrapped around this inside which here is not so there you go that one is absolutely fine you do not need to remove that and generally you don't so my next step now this is what i do i just take a little piece of y wall you don't need to rub very hard don't need to rub very hard there you go and that takes all that you see on my finger all that gunk that's collected over time <clears throat> and then i always check the sub drum make sure all the pins are present if you're ever missing a stitch if you're ever missing a stitch on one of your on one of your carriages this will be why because one of these pins here is missing then what i do is i take simple earbud now I have heard people say that um, and I use flash that flash it's a degreaser very good degreaser on the end of it and just inside getting the whole of the inside now you can see this that's a build up of grease, knitting machine oil, and whatnot, dust, cheeseburgers. A piece of paper towel is always useful. Then, what I do generally do. Is, I know I've heard people say don't use WD-40 uh, it jams a carriage up that's complete rubbish it does not jam the carriage up if you don't want to use WD-40 you can use knitting machine oil silicone so what I've done here is I've just sprayed it gently and then wiped it off that's created a seal over the metal spray the inside of the and then what I have my favorite thing in the whole world Ambersil 40 plus this is the best lubricant there is. Quick spray. And then the same again here. You don't need very much. And then back to where it was. And you can see there what I was talking about. It won't go down because the pins are up. So all you're going to do. Around here, 
you have to do it at the front. There's the gap that you need. And there you go. Just very gently. And then push the pins back up and that will hold it in place. Now, this hopefully should spin nicely, just like the way it should do. Then all you have to do is put it back together again, which is... No. This is a bit that I hate. I don't know why I have problems with this. Probably because of the size of my hands. It's getting that circlet back on. I always have to push it in with a so what I do, screwdriver. So what I do then is I do it. I push it with my fingers, grip it, hopefully, and then snap it in just like that. There you go. Your next step will be this. That's the bracket that holds the drum in place. You'll need to put this silver strip back through the two slots in it. And again, I sometimes have trouble with that because of the size of my hands. I've always thought it would be much easier if I had hands the size of a, of a lady's. Once you get that in the slots, I'll get a picture of it so people can see that. So there you go. So that's through the slot there. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to hook that back over, hopefully, that spring, which is just there. And there it is. There it is. So that spring, yeah, I've hooked that strip back over. Your next step is once that's in place, don't forget your spring. So what you do here. You want to make sure the shortest, so the short, flattest part is down. So the short part of the spring will sit here, but it has to go through this part here first. So there it goes. That's how it sits. Don't attempt to reset the spring yet because it, it, it'll create all sorts of problems, believe me, if you try to do that first. So now what we're going to do is we're going to reset the drum. So what I do, just loosely first, put the screws back in, move the spring out of the way. There you go. It's always good to have a hand with this because this is where you have to set the drum. Oops, so I gotta be able to see. what I do, make sure, now if you hear that, that is obviously in the wrong place. So, that looks good to me. If I'm very careful, I won't move the bracket while I'm screwing it down. There you go. And your last job, as you can see, just spins very nicely. Your last job is to reset this spring. And that's actually quite easy. I know people find it hard. So what you do is you take the spring like that, make sure that that is upright. Push it down under this piece here. Underneath. And there is a slot underneath there. And there it is. 
And I'll come around. He's a lefty, so it makes it difficult to try to film the whole process. But if you look right through there, you can see the little slot that that spring is fitting into. And that's all done. I hope that's helped. And basically, all you have to do now okay. is reverse the process for the other side to put this back on. I'm just going to show you real quickly how to put this back on. So, casing. Casing first. Mm -hmm. Now, if you look inside, you'll see this. You'll move, move the move the dial. You'll see that pin. You want to hit the pin so they can see it move with your right. Oh, oh. I see. Go ahead. So that slots down inside. Well, what you have here is you have this spring. Remember. There you go. Which can sometimes be a real pain. So what I generally do is I put that inside when I'm doing it. and twist and that will lock it put the two screws back in remember I told you if you have a rattling case it's these two screws it will just need to be tightened up you don't want to tighten them too much, obviously, because you'll crack the casing. What you have to do then is just make sure that this is set properly. And we'll find out if it is shortly. So you see the slot there? That's for that pin there. Again. Now that is not set properly it's not spinning so undo the casing again you'll know when it's in properly because everything will move like it's supposed to there should actually be a loud click when it comes out properly so I'm just going to remove the casing again now what I've done is I've lined it back up again. That's the click you want to hear. Okay. Right there. Now you can see that the now you can thing see that that's moving. Properly. I'm going to line that up. Okay. That's so all he did was put the casing in before the screws, and that's all right. If that's what you have to do, that's what you have to do. I have generally this is the way that I do it. I put the dial in before I screw it down because I just like to know that it works. Otherwise, you end up doing what I just did, which was unscrewing the casing again, which isn't ideal. So there you go. This all works perfectly. You can feel that. This all works perfectly. And you can see that. All right, now if you flip it over so you can see it then show it spinning. So, as That's you can see, that is all working perfectly. And spin that back. I shall to show you the dial. You can see those these side cams here Shifting. working the way that they should. There you go. I'll turn it back over. This is the part that some people find difficult. Um, I've got to be honest with you. I did first, but we I have found that the best way is to lay this flat. I think that's backwards. <laughs> it was backwards. It was backwards. Thank you for pointing that out. <laughs> That's why I'm here, babe. Just here to help. You could take the barrels. Always have the handle lying flat instead of upright. 
you're going to have because huge problems if you if you put it upright. It's so much easier to get the screws back in if the handle is lying flat up against the carriage. Now you should be able to feel. You have sometimes have to wiggle it around, and I don't know why I always have problems with this. You do have to line it up, that's for sure. There it goes. You can feel it when it goes into the hole. And he's just screwing the screws in loosely at first. Just to make sure the handle is in, where in the it correct needs position. To be. Generally, once you get one in, the other one will go straight in, and that's the way that's the way that it should be. Once you know that your screws are in correctly, then you can tighten them. Again, you don't want to over tighten. If you over tighten those screws, when you go to do them again, you will strip the screws and you will never get them out again. So just finger tight is good enough. So if you ever come across a carriage, you see a carriage that has no handle, chances are the reason it has no handle is because the handle was cracked at the screw holes or the screw hole, the screw was broken or stripped going in. Anyway, there you go. I hope that's helped. Um, it's not as complicated as everybody um, thinks it is. It's just a step by step. If you follow those steps, you'll be fine. Oops, sorry. Flip it over like this and show them that that's spinning. So there you go. There's your there's the pattern drum I just serviced. And you can see it spinning. It's spinning on top, the way it and should you can do. See it at the bottom as well. This one here is the one I have not done. Still stiff. Which is I'm going to go back afterwards and do. Anyway, hope that's helped. There's a completed carriage. Have a good day.